Assalamu alaikum and hi everybody. How's your day going? Good to see you again. Okay now, we will continue our online class on EBT 419 Applied Metallurgy. Today we are discussing about the plaster mold casting process in expandable mold of metal casting. Referring the chart here, in expendable mold casting, plaster molding is termed as plaster bond. It is directly placed under permanent pattern. Plaster mold casting is a specialized casting process used to produce non-ferrous castings that have greater dimensional accuracy, smoother surfaces, and more finely reproduced detail than can be obtained in sand molds or coated permanent molds. Plaster mold casting is a metalworking casting process similar to sand casting, except the molding material is plaster of Paris, instead of sand. Like sand casting, plaster mold casting is an expendable mold process, however it can only be used with non-ferrous materials. Simply process, plaster is mixed with water and poured over the pattern. It is used for castings volume as small as 30 gram to as large as 45 kilogram. Generally, the form takes less than a week to prepare. The production rates of 110 units per hour can be achieved with plaster molds. The special about plaster molding process is, it could produce an accurate, good surface, and low melting point alloy. Parts that are typically made by plaster casting are lock components, gears, valves, fittings, tooling, and ornaments. Plaster mold casting process for casting silver, gold, aluminium, magnesium, copper, and alloys of those metals, particularly brass and bronze, plaster of Paris or gypsum is extensively used. Gypsum is particularly used for investment casting, or for cope, and drag molding. For preparing the mold, a slurry is used which consists of 100 parts of metal casting plaster, and 160 parts of water. It is important to note that, Plaster is to be added to water, and not water to plaster of Paris. They are then stirred slowly to creamy consistency. This slurry is poured over a carefully made match plate type pattern, usually of metal. The mold is vibrated slightly to ensure plasters filling all small cavities. The initial setting takes place at room temperature after few minutes of pouring of slurry, and then the pattern can be removed. Sometimes, the initial setting time is decreased by heating or by adding a small quantity of natural gypsum calcium. Copes and drags are made simultaneously on separate lines and dried in ovens at 200 to 425 degrees Celsius, until all free and combined moisture is removed. Normally 20 hours is the time for drying purposes. In order to prevent the cracking of molds, 20 to 30 percent talc is added to the plaster while mixing. In addition other compounds such as terra alba, which is natural gypsum calcium, or, magnesium oxide are added to reduce the initial setting time. Sometimes lime or cement is also added, to control the expansion of plaster during caking. Mold sections obtained by this process are very fragile and require care in assembling. Now, let take a look the video clip on plaster molding process.
The Advantages of Plaster Mold Casting Process Plaster mold casting is used when an excellent surface finish and good dimensional accuracy is required. Because the plaster has a low thermal conductivity and heat capacity, the metal cools more slowly than in a sand mold, which allows the metal to fill thin cross sections, the minimum possible cross section is 0.6 mm. This results in a near net shape casting, which can be a cost advantage on complex parts. It also produces minimal scrap material. The Advantages of Plaster Mold Casting Process The major disadvantage of the process is that, it can only be used with lower melting temperature non-ferrous materials, such as aluminium, magnesium, and zinc and sometimes copper alloys. The most commonly used materials is aluminium. The maximum working temperature of plaster is 1200 degrees Celsius, so higher melting temperature materials would melt the plaster mold. Also, the sulfur in the gypsum reacts with iron, making it unsuitable for casting ferrous materials. Another disadvantage is that its long cooling times restrict production volume. Plaster is not as stable as sand, so it is dependent on several factors, including the consistency of the plaster composition, pouring procedures, and curing techniques. If these factors are not closely monitored, the mold can be distorted, shrink upon drying, have a poor surface finish, or fail completely. Okay, that's all for now. We will continue the online lecture on another expendable mold that is investment casting on the next slide. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you require further information through our WhatsApp and Telegram class group. Thank you very much for your attention. Assalamu alaikum. See you then. Bye.